Hey everybody, it's Nathan. Today I wanted to make a video to introduce myself, look at why I call myself a creative, and take a look at some super fun handmade watercolors. Before I get into that, I just want to talk about what we are watching. I had sketched Luca and Alberto from Pixar's Luca after the first time I watched the movie. I really, I didn't paint them. I just drew them and kind of forgot about them and decided that I'd come back when I felt like painting, which was perfect because I had ordered my first palette from Lost Girl Watercolors. When it came, I wanted to paint something and I was trying to think about what I wanted to paint. And then I realized as I was flipping through my pages that I had this Luca spread all ready to go. So it was perfect. Of course, it wasn't until I painted Luca on the right side of the spread that I decided to turn the camera on and film the process. But both color, not colors, both characters were painted only using this one palette. But more on Luca and that palette in just a minute. But first, since this is my first sort of art related video on this channel, I thought it would be a good opportunity to just kind of talk about, introduce myself, talk about who I am, um, just briefly. I, maybe I don't have time to share a ton and everything, but maybe the Cliff Notes version and some more will come in some videos later. <laughs> so I was always interested in arts, crafts, making things, building things, and just using my imagination. In high school though, I became involved in a junior PR club. I, which is sounds boring, but it was basically a photography club for well for me at least. We would we were given cameras and we had to go out around the school or to school events after in the evening after school and photograph the events so that they could be used for the public relations and advertising sort of newspaper kind of stuff. Like it's not advertising, but that at that point I had already been using my dad's um, like quote unquote big camera the DSLR. And even like way back to when I was little, my grandma's video camera. So I always had that interest and in, like for years and I knew that I loved it. I had the opportunity to learn more like photography techniques and even get into the dark room during a few of our required tech ed classes. So that was all fun and everything. But in my senior year, a lot of my friends were in the um, advanced placement AP classes and they were earning college credits, which was perfectly fine. I, I was happy without all of the added coursework and the pressure that they had, but I was a little jealous that they were and kind of missing out on the fact that they were earning college credits. So I went home and I asked my parents if I could take a photography class at the community college on Saturday mornings. It was a basic black and white course with a darkroom lab component and I fell in love with it. Ultimately, leading me to decide to continue my education in college with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in photography specifically. All the while I was doing this, I was working for um, local photo studios and newspapers. It was during college that my true fascination and appreciation for photography, not just photography actually, but art in general, began to grow. My junior year, I got the opportunity to study, abro study abroad in Rome, Italy. Like I was immersed in art and art history in every single way possible. I was able to use electives for courses like the art of Rome, which meant like at the Colosseum or in a museum. And then also um, studio painting classes and stuff like that. I really didn't do I, I like business classes, like writing or anything like that. It was just basically all art all the time. Which brings me back to Luca and why I love it so much. It reminds me so much of my time in Italy and all of the places that I visited while I was there. Each weekend, my roommate and I would basically just pick a town that we could get to in a, in a few hours, book a train, a hostel, or I guess we call it an Airbnb now, and just go do as much as we possibly could. Luca really is a celebration of all of those things combined for me which is why I originally fell in love with it. But then going even deeper, I think it's so much more. It's more about the carefree days of childhood, growing up, 
and most importantly, the relationships. So it's just all of that combined is amazing. And speaking of relationships, after college, I married my high school sweetheart, aww, Coletta. We spent our honeymoon in Rome in the same exact neighborhood that I had studied just years prior, which was awesome. And needless to say, Italy holds a pretty big part in our hearts. So fast forward 12 years, I'm still working as a self-employed photographer, shooting almost, well, literally anything that I can and operating a photo booth business, doing proms, weddings, birthday parties, all of that sort of thing. And while I'm doing that, Coletta is a third grade teacher. Since we were married, we had always wanted to move to Florida. Um, the, the, but the timing never worked out until last year when everything seemed to just sort of fit into place. We chose Florida for so many reasons. I had relatives move here. Florida, like my great grandparents would come here. They were snowbirds. And it's always it was always a thing that I wanted to do. But one of the biggest reasons is our love. And by love, I mean maybe a healthy obsession with Disney and the Disney parks, which we actually have a separate YouTube channel and Instagram for just for our stuff related to Disney. I'll put the links to that in the description if that sounds like something you might be interested in. So over the course of 12 years, photography became more of a job and really less of a passion for me, which does sound sad, but it's not because I still love it. I just needed um, a more I needed more to stimulate my creativity. This is when I began to really get into art journaling, watercolor painting, learning techniques, practicing the techniques, because it was a good escape and a good escape and a perfect way to feed my creativity. I also left photography at times when I needed more income or had different opportunities. And even in those times, even sometimes depressed, I realized that being creative is a part of everything which kind of reminds me of the mary poppins like she's singing in every job that must be done there's an element of fun which is true um for one for example one of like the i guess darkest times for me um when i really like felt like the creativity was just sucked out of my life was um a few years that i worked in a styrofoam factory like doing basic like i was a floor laborer um which we would just cut and glue styrofoam you know like the white like the breaks and goes everywhere is messy styrofoam um, we cut it and glue it for different applications like packaging and insulations it was super repetitive daunting and tedious but what I came to realize um, and what made the difference for me was the idea of that I could figure out new and better ways of doing these same things over and over making it more like faster and more efficient i i loved the creative problem solving of it and that is where i found the creativity in that job eventually everybody was literally coming to me with like problems and asking me how to change what they were doing or how to do something and i that, which and they weren't going to the people that they needed to be going to which was a whole separate thing but on this job, I was allowed to listen to headphones. So most of the time I was listening to podcasts and books and just consumed so much content, which propelled my mind in so many different directions, ultimately leading me to quit that job, which is kind of ironic, but really pursue photography and art once again. It was also during that time through photography, actually, that I found a job as a production director for a church in an old 300 seat movie theater that would also host outside of events during the week and in the evenings. This really drove home the idea of being creative in non-creative jobs or non-creative areas and managing people and problems and other situations that didn't include a paintbrush or a camera. I did, however, learn from that experience a whole new avenue and creative channel that included 
lighting design, sound design, and video production. And that just sort of added more ways to express creativity to my tool belt. So this all leads me back to the question of why I call myself a creative. Sure, photography was my main area of interest in college and for most of my professional career, but I couldn't and can't just say I'm a photographer or I'm an artist. It just makes so much more sense for me to call myself a creative. And getting back to the reason that I turned the camera on to film this video in the first place is the watercolor palette that I was testing. This palette from Lost Girl Watercolor is called Mary Flair. When I saw this palette listed, I knew that I wanted to try it. The first thing that I did when I got the palette was sort of mix them all together in a color wheel to see if I could make a rainbow, which I could, and it had a really nice feel to it. I really wanted to use these colors just exclusively to paint these pages to see how far I could sort of push them and mix them. In the end, as you can see now, I did take colored pencils and sort of add in a few more details and sort of just tighten everything up and add a little bit of shadow. One trick that I kind of did was after I added the pencil and did shading, I went back in with watercolor and going back in with a watercolor over the pencil sort of like filled in the holes that the pencil had rather than making it super solid with the pencil. It just kind of smoothed it out and filled the areas to make it look less like colored pencil and more like watercolor. At least I thought so. Overall, I think this palette is extremely versatile and the colors that you get when you mix it really fit for my, like my taste, my personal aesthetic. Well, I mean, I use almost any color anytime. I really love that like vintagey, unsaturated look. I think the green gold color called Concept is probably the star of the palette for me, which is just my total favorite. It has like a yellow green base, but then has metallic gold mixed in with it. I don't know. They're all good. The one color that I really didn't use in this painting was the pink color called Childlike. It's a baby pink that has a like a chunky glitter in it. It is so much fun. It just didn't work with the spread. Although in general, I'm not really sure how I feel about chunky glitter paints. I guess there is always a time and place for everything. It's just not something that I see myself reaching for a lot. I am really excited to try some other stuff with this palette. I can't wait not just to try these colors, but other palettes from Lost Girl Watercolor. They re-wet so nicely and they're like super pigmented. I'll put the link um, in the description for this palette and Lost Girl watercolor uh, just in case you're interested. And I just want to say thank you for taking the time out to sort of get to know me in this video and watch me swatch out and play and mix with these new watercolors. I have some more videos coming up and I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. I almost hate saying that, but it really does help so much. And in the meantime, come over and follow me on Instagram at Nathan Ballish Creative. I will put the link to that also in the description below. Again, thank you so much for clicking on this video, watching this video, and supporting me in that way. I can't wait to get to know each and every one of you. Maybe leave a comment below, let me know, introduce yourself, or let me know your favorite country or place that you would like to visit, or your favorite Pixar Disney movie. I really look forward to seeing what everyone has to say. And I will leave you with the last little bit of painting the spread and some close-ups at the end. So until next time, stay creative. <laughs> Bye.